Ashto T2, sampling, coarse, and fine aggregate. The data resulting from tests on aggregate samples can only be valid if the samples used in the testing are accurate representatives of the quality and characteristics of the entire aggregate batch. Data based on poorly taken, non-representative samples is worthless. This data may mislead engineers, producers, and highway contractors, resulting in costly mistakes. During this section, we will review how to take samples of coarse and fine aggregates from conveyor belts, stockpiles, trucks, rail cars, barges, and roadways. Conveyor belt samples are the most representative of the material being produced. However, belt samples are generally difficult to obtain. Producers do not like to stop the belt because of loss of production time, difficulty in restarting a loaded belt, and the need to dig out the crusher. Most samples are taken from stockpiles. Because of the difficulty in taking representative stockpile samples, the importance of following the proper procedures cannot be overemphasized. Samples from trucks, rail cars, and barges are the least desirable of the sampling options. Whenever possible, it is preferable to sample from the stockpile or the belt. When samples are taken from the roadway or other points of use, it is important to understand that the gradations obtained may be influenced by placement technique and therefore may not represent the material as produced. Let's begin with taking samples from conveyor belts. There are two types of belt samples, belt cross-section and belt discharge. Belt cross-section samples should be taken while the belt is stopped. Required precautions should be taken to prevent the belt from being restarted while you take the sample. Remember, do not sample from the initial discharge onto the conveyor belt. Based on the load on the belt, select places on the belt for the templates and insert them all the way to the belt. Sample between the two templates. Collect all of the material on the belt between the two templates and place it in the field sample container. Use a brush to collect all of the fines. Repeat this sampling procedure for a minimum of three belt samples from three belt locations separated by sufficient distance and time and combine them into one field sample. You can also collect a discharge stream sample from the end of the belt. Pass a suitable container through the entire width of the discharge stream. A clean bucket on a front-end loader often works well as a sampling container for belt discharge samples. At some locations, a sample thief is available for sampling belts or discharges from bins or hoppers. The container for the thief must be capable of holding the entire discharge of the sampled material without overflowing. Belt sampling for fine aggregates and road base is similar to sampling for coarse aggregate. Here's a safety note. Never sample from the top of a bin or hopper. Bridge material may collapse and cover you while sampling. Remember to work safely while taking samples. Let's review sampling from cross sections of conveyor belts. 1. Stop the belt before sampling. 2. Insert two templates all the way to the belt. 3. Collect all of the material on the belt between the two templates, including the fines. 4. Repeat the procedure for a minimum of three belt samples from three belt locations separated by sufficient distance and time and combine them into one field sample. You will most commonly be required to sample a stockpile. Because the methods used to build the stockpile influence the distribution of particles within the stockpile, proper methods must be followed to obtain a representative sample. Before we talk about how to properly sample from stockpiles, let's review how stockpiles are built and how the method of stockpile building influences variations in the gradation of the material in the stockpile. Remember that particle size may vary both horizontally and vertically within the pile. The radial stacker builds a tent or elongated tent-shaped stockpile. A fixed conveyor builds a cone-shaped stockpile. Generally, segregation is worse with cone-shaped stockpiles than with tent-shaped stockpiles. In addition to these influences, segregation occurs due to vibration on a moving conveyor belt. The segregation is then made worse when it comes off the uncontrolled end of a conveyor as shown. The fines tend to drop straight down from the end of the belt, 
The larger particles tend to fall farther away from the conveyor. As a result, the stockpile segregates into two areas. The side closest to the conveyor tends to be finer, and the farthest side coarser than the gradation of the overall production run. Let's begin with taking samples from stockpiles using a front-end loader. There are three basic rules for sampling a stockpile. One, samples must be taken at a right angle perpendicular to the original flow into the pile. Two, remove portions of the face to eliminate segregation of the pile and to allow material to cascade from the top of the pile. Three, take bucket loads with the loader from a minimum of three locations across the face of the stockpile to represent the cross-section being sampled. Each of the bucket loads should be kept as separate sampling piles and sampled individually. When building a sampling pile, keep the bucket of the loader as low as possible and roll the material out of the bucket, rather than dumping it out. Limiting the distance the material falls from the bucket helps to control segregation. Roll out each bucket for the other sampling piles this same way. Check the sampling pile for a uniform appearance. If it does not appear to be uniform, discard that pile and create a new one. Back drag the stockpile with the bottom edge of the bucket to level the upper one-half to one-third of the pile. Use a square tip shovel to take the sample. Insert the shovel to its full depth. Be careful to keep as much of the sample on the shovel as possible. Take shovelfuls dispersed across the entire flattened surface. Place each shovelful in the sampling container. Let's review the procedure for sampling from a stockpile using a front-end loader. 1. Create a minimum of three sampling piles. Remember that material must be obtained from a minimum of three locations across the face of the stockpile. 2. When creating each sampling pile, roll out the bucket to control segregation. 3. Flatten each sampling pile by back-dragging the edge of the loader bucket to level the upper one-half to one-third of the pile. 4. Use a square tip shovel to take the sample from across the entire flattened surface. When a front-end loader is not available to sample a stockpile, the samples may be taken manually. However, use caution when climbing stockpiles. Unstable stockpiles could collapse unexpectedly. Examine the face of the stockpile of coarse aggregate for sampling locations. In deciding upon sample locations, remember, for a cone-shaped stockpile, 70% of the volume of aggregate is in the lower third, compared to only 4% in the upper third. While in a tent-shaped stockpile, approximately 60% of the volume is in the lower third, and 11% is in the upper third. Use this volume distribution in determining the amount of sample to be taken from each section of the stockpile. For example, fine aggregates are sampled from tent-shaped stockpiles at three locations in the bottom third, two locations in the middle, and one location in the upper third, commonly referred to as the 3 to one technique. Remember that T2 requires manual sample portions to be taken from the upper third, middle third, and bottom third of the stockpile. At each sample location, insert a board vertically just above the sample location. The board will prevent coarse aggregate in the outside layer of the stockpile from rolling over into the sample area. After the board has been stabilized, dig out a shelf below the board and discard this material. The process removes potentially unrepresentative material from the outer layer of the stockpile. Take the sample by digging downward vertically with a square tip shovel. Be careful to keep as much of the sample on the shovel as possible. Place each shovel full in the sampling container. Repeat this procedure to obtain the additional sample portions specified by the shape of the pile you are sampling. Combine your sample portions into one field sample. Manual sampling of stockpiles of finer material is similar. Fine aggregate has less of a tendency to segregate than coarse aggregate. Select the sampling locations using the same approach as for coarse aggregate. With a shovel or with your hands, scrape off the outer layer of the stockpile. Take the fine aggregate sample with a shovel or a metal sample tube. 
The tube should be one and a quarter inches inside diameter and six feet long. Insert the tube horizontally until resistance indicates that the material has plugged the tube. Handles on the outer end of the tube will make this job easier. Never repeatedly jam a plugged tube into the stockpile to obtain the sample. Tilt the end of the tube down to prevent loss of material and withdraw it from the stockpile. Wipe off the tube to remove the attached aggregate. Place the sampling end of the tube into the sample container and knock the side of the tube to remove the sample. Repeat this procedure at the same entry point until the tube has been inserted to its full length. This procedure yields a sample representative of several hours of stockpile creation. Repeat this procedure to obtain the additional sample portions specified by the shape of the pile you are sampling. Let's review the procedures for manual sampling from a coarse aggregate stockpile. 1. Select a minimum of three locations, at least one from the upper third of the stockpile, one from the middle third, and one from the bottom third. 2. At each sample location, insert a board vertically just above the sample location. 3. Dig out a shelf below the board and discard this material. 4. Take the sample by digging downward vertically with a square tip shovel. 5. Repeat this procedure to obtain the additional sample portions specified by the shape of the pile you are sampling. Now let's review the procedures for manual sampling from a fine aggregate stockpile. 1. Select the sampling locations using the same approach as for coarse aggregate. With a shovel or with your hands, scrape off the outer layer of the stockpile. 2. Take the fine aggregate sample with a metal sample tube. 3. Insert the tube horizontally in stages to the full length of the tube. 4. Tilt the tube downward and withdraw it from the stockpile. 5. Wipe off the tube to remove the attached aggregate. 6. Place the sampling end of the tube into the sample container and knock the side of the tube to remove the sample. 7. Repeat the insertion procedure until the tube has been inserted its full length. 8. Repeat this procedure to obtain the additional sample portions specified by the shape of the pile you are sampling. It is more difficult to obtain good representative samples from haul vehicles, such as trucks, rail cars, and barges, than it is from stockpiles. Because the majority of the aggregate is enclosed by the body of the haul vehicle, it is difficult to determine sample locations or to sample vertically in the aggregate mass. It is recommended that you sample at the point of delivery, not from the haul vehicle. If, however, you are faced with a condition beyond your control and you are required to sample from haul vehicles, you should follow these sampling procedures in order to get the best sample obtainable. Begin by digging a minimum of three trenches across the width of the vehicle. Make each trench approximately level, one foot deep and one foot wide. You should always dig a minimum of three trenches, but more may be required depending on the size of the haul unit and the tonnage involved. From the bottom of each trench, take seven equal shovels full of aggregate. Of the seven samples from each trench, two of those should be taken directly against each side of the haul unit. Combine the material taken from the trenches of one haul unit into one field sample. Let's review the procedures for sampling from haul vehicles. 1. Begin by digging a minimum of three trenches across the width of the vehicle. 2. Make each trench approximately level, one foot deep and one foot wide. 3. From the bottom of each trench, take seven equal shovels full of aggregate. 4. Of the seven samples from each trench, two of those should be taken directly against each side of the haul unit. 5. Combine the material taken from the trenches of one haul unit into one field sample. Base material may be sampled from a truck or dumped truckload or from the roadway. If at all possible, samples that you take from the roadway should be taken before the base has been moved in any way or rolled. Sampling before any manipulation avoids the possibility of contaminating the base. 
In cases where you have no alternative, samples may be taken from the base after spreading and manipulation. You must exercise extreme care in these cases to avoid contamination. You should take samples from the roadway generally in the way you would from a dumped truckload. Collect seven samples that are equally spaced across the entire width of the road. Take two of the seven samples from each outside edge of the roadway. Be sure to get the entire thickness of the material, but don't contaminate the sample with any underlying material. You will have to sample from a number of cross-sections to accurately represent the material. Combine all of these samples into one field sample. The weight of the total field sample must be adequate to meet the requirements of the test method for which the sample is being obtained, and Table 1 of ASTM D75. This table requires larger samples for larger maximum nominal particle size. Let's review the procedures for sampling from roadways. 1. Collect seven samples that are equally spaced across the entire width of the road. 2. Take two of the seven samples from each outside edge of the roadway. 3. Be sure to get the entire thickness of the material, but don't contaminate the sample with any underlying material. 4. Sample from a number of cross-sections to accurately represent the material. 5. Combine all samples into one field sample.